my name is Caroline Garrett. We are here with my supply guy and Benika Shears. We're hosting a class. I'd like to introduce myself first of all as a 21 year master stylist veteran and owner of the Bridge Salon. And today our class that we're gonna host is just gonna give you a little education on how to create that celebrity stylist picture on your client that comes in the door. I do find over the course of time as being a stylist in my 21 years of doing hair that I tend to find a person coming into the salon and I've never met them before. I don't know what I'm about to get when they sit in the chair, but of course they're going to have a picture that seems to never fit the shape of their face, their lifestyle. So we're going to spend some time today just going over little tweaks and little ways of secrets I've learned along the way on how to create a hairstyle from the client's picture to fit the shape of their face. I want y'all to meet Anita. She's our model today. And we're gonna go ahead and spend a little time doing a consultation with her. She has some naturally curly hair. She's brought in a picture today that of, a, um, of Jacqueline Smith. We're going to go ahead and put Jacqueline Smith's hairstyle on her. The good thing about Anita is she's got about the same length as Jacqueline up here, but there are a few things about the shape of Anita's face and Jacqueline's face that we're going to have to customize the hairstyle for her. So let's go ahead and talk to, Jack, uh, to Anita about some things that she likes about Jacqueline's haircut. So Anita, what is it that you like about this haircut when you brought this picture into me? Just the layers and the layers. Across your face. Do you have a classic hairstyle that you lean towards when you style your hair? Do you have a classic cut that you lean towards? Usually layered, medium length layers. When I don't wear it curly, I blow it dry straight. Okay. So you have a little natural um, curl in your hair, some texture, and you have finer hair which means we're gonna have to focus on some of these key points. When we look at a picture like this, her hair texture, Jacqueline's hair texture is different than Anita's. Um, we all also already discussed that your face shape is slightly different than hers. So what we wanna do when we're customizing a haircut is we wanna focus, first thing that's a priority is I wanna focus on the face shape. I wanna figure out what it is about Anita's face that I need to do to match up with Jacqueline's face. Because a lot of times when a client brings in a picture, they see the picture of the person and the hairstyle that matches that person. And they want to be able to be seeing the same thing on themselves. So, something that I want to discuss with you is the fact that you have a very high cheekbone. We want to look at the shape of your face. You tend to run slightly round in this area. And so, some of the things that we want to do to customize for that, a lot of times when you have a round face, is we're going to take and we're going to bring some layers in towards your face. What that does is it creates an oblong or an oval shaped face. Aesthetically to the eye, the oval shaped face is going to be what your eye caters to see more as, um, as a natural look of what makes sense to your eye. So when we have someone that has a heart shaped face or a square shaped face or an oblong shaped face, we're gonna find ways in our haircut to bring that look to cater to bringing it back to that oval shaped face. So here in this picture that she's picked with Jacqueline, it's good that Jacqueline has a little angling around her face line. We're gonna create a little layering around her face so we can do that with Anita. Anita has some of that, but we're gonna bring it a little bit more extreme around her face. I noticed that you have a side part. So what we're going to want to do, do you always wear a side part? Not always. Not always. Okay. Do you prefer bangs? Because they are in this picture, she has some bangs and some of them she doesn't. She has more of a split. Bangs are good. Bangs are good. So I do want to discuss something specifically with bangs because a lot of times people see a picture that have bangs and what we actually want to do is we want to see the size of her forehead. Because if we're creating a bang, we don't want a very short bang on the forehead and it not look in proportion. 
what that actually is going to do is it's going to square off her face and draw more attention to the round cheekbones. And that's not exactly the right thing to do. What we would want to do in this instance if we're having bangs is to create the bang illusion, we're going to have to start deeper into the hairline to create a bang for her and it carry the illusion of being a bang by going a little deeper. If we start a fine line with a bang and we do a bang, she's not going to have much hair at all right here and it's going to create a very short, unproportioned bang for her. So if someone cuts the improper bang on your face, it's not going to create a shape that you like. We're going to pause for a minute, we're going to wash her, and we're going to go ahead and start, and I'll talk as I go on the haircut of how we're going to shape her more into Miss Jacqueline Smith. So, come on over here, what we'll do is we I want everybody to focus in on our face shapes. Here we've got all the different face shapes listed. A client is always going to fit within one of these face shapes. So a priority of something that you need to do, if a client brings in a picture of a celebrity or even just any picture in the magazine, is you need to realize what face shape it is that you're dealing with when the picture brought in, as well as what face shape it is on the client. So let's just take a moment and discuss some of our face shapes. Let's start with the square up here. First of all, you have a square. You're going to notice that your client or the picture has a square shape because it's going to end up having a square top and it's going to equal down here and it's going to square off in the jawline. The next picture is round. A lot of times you'll recognize a round face shape, which can be very similar to oval, but it's going to carry a wider cheekbone. You have a pear face shape next. And as you can see in the picture of where it's drawn around, it's going to be a little more narrow on the top and you're going to find yourself a little wider in the cheek and the jawline. The next one's going to be oblong. Oblong is also very similar to oval, but you'll carry a little more length. Now how you're going to notice the difference between oblong and oval is you always want to carry three fingers here in the top section of the forehead, three fingers in the mid, and three fingers in the bottom. If they all equal out, you know you've got the classic oval shape. When you carry a little bit higher up here, three fingers in the middle, and a little bit more fingers down here in the bottom, that's how you're gonna know that you don't have an oval, you're in the oblong shape. With the diamond, diamond is similar to pear, but you're gonna carry a more sharper chin line with the diamond, and like the pear, it's also gonna come more narrow on the top. And the last face shape that we have is the heart shape. The heart shape you're going to usually have associated with a widow's peak. If someone has a widow's peak, they're going to have hair that comes more down into a point, and they're going to have two calyx that come out on both sides, and it's going to help accentuate the heart shape of the face. You'll also carry a more pointed chin line. So as I was saying earlier, the oval-shaped face is going to be the most classic and what we would call naturally appealing for the eye to see. It's just because it carries proportion in it. Like I was saying earlier, it's three fingers proportion in the top, the middle, and the bottom, and it carries an even width on the side. When you're doing classic cutting and someone doesn't bring a picture in, you usually want to find whatever hairstyle will cater to bringing you visually into an oval-shaped face. When they have brought in a picture, the other thing I was mentioning is we need to associate the shape of the face with the picture. Anita's brought us in Jacqueline. And so we want to make sure that we know what Jacqueline's face shape is and what Anita's face shape is, like we were talking about earlier, and create a haircut to bring those similar shape faces together. I'm going to use her for an example because she is our model. Right now, what we want to do, still even though we're using Jacqueline Smith's picture, we want to still visually bring her into an oval-shaped face. So some of the little tricks that I've learned along the way is one, we're going to find her natural part. And she says she doesn't always part on the side, which is the way she came in when she was dry, which then brings me to the point that we'll ask, once I found her natural part by combing everything back and pushing it forward, the hair will naturally fall into a part, which was similar to where she came in as. But if she doesn't, 
A lot of times what I'll do is I'll cut my client's hair with a middle part. That way if we're layering and we cut on a middle part, we can create the illusion that the layers will balance on both sides. As she decides to toss her hair, change her part, she'll still create balance on her face. Now we have a slightly off-center part for you as your natural part. Do you want to go with your natural part for today? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because if you change it enough, I would do the middle part. But if you mostly let the natural curls fall on its natural part. So this right here is where Anita's natural part is. She discussed with us that she sometimes is interested in bangs. We'll get to that shortly in the haircut. What I'm going to do is my classic parting and sectioning to go ahead and start with my haircut. So here. I'm going to make sure that I part it right at the peak and slightly behind the peak of the ear on this one side. I'm going to also part it on this side. This is your classic parting technique. The reason why we part it this way is some of the things that we learned early in hair cutting is our flats and our rounds. So this separates the hair right where hair grows further down behind the ear into this lower neck region and where the hair stops above the ear. That's why we separate right here. So we'll start with cutting the back. We're going to ask Anita to put her head down, and you're going to lean forward just a little bit for me. Anita, I'm just going to trim you because I want to keep as much length on your hair as possible. So I'm going to pull out my go-to classic Benica shear. We're just going to trim her edges. We want to keep as much length as we can on her hair, but make sure that we're getting off any split ends. And I'm always going to take a moment and just show you exactly what I'm taking off. So we're going to go ahead and start trimming the back. We want to make sure her neck and her face is always chin to chest when we're cutting this back area so that we can make sure that we don't have any undercut showing when she brings her head up. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to lift her head up and I'm just going to ask you to keep your body straight but turn your head all the way to the right. Now you can see my parting here where the hair doesn't grow any past the top of the ear. We've got that section in front of the ear. And here, as you can see where the hair grows all the way down into the nape area, we've got that section in the back. We've got to find a meeting point now on our haircut of where the hair meets behind the ear to where the hair meets the front. So when we turn her head to the right, this gives us a flat cutting region. I'm going to grab the back hair and I'm going to as you can see, I'm going to extend it forward a little bit, and we're just going to start trimming that straight line. Now we've got a level cut right here from the hair in the front, meeting the hair length in the back. And then I'm going to keep your body straight, and you're going to look all the way to your left. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just like we have one foot a little bit larger, one hand a little bit larger, I will tell you your left side of your hair grows a little bit faster. So that's yeah. probably the side of your body that has one slightly larger. Okay. Now, this is actually a good way that we can see where we're at. See, this is great to know because when you have a client that comes in and they bring a picture, they may have a previous haircut growing out. So in this instance, here Anita has almost like a bang drop where it's cut back into her hairline and then she has some length dropping here and some length that's brought around from the back. Well now we're stuck with how we're matching the celebrity haircut to where she has grown in and the illusion of the look that we want. And this happens a lot of times when we get a client in and they think that they want this certain haircut but a part of your consultation which is your priority is we've got to make sure that we know and properly explain to that client what they're going to get when they leave this service. Sometimes we nail it because they've got the perfect hair to go into the perfect picture, 
And sometimes we got to say, you know what, this is going to take one or two haircuts approximately to get to where you want to go. So in this case, we're going to tell her, I can blend this and this is going to look very similar to the picture you brought in, but we got a little growing in that we need here. And we'll get that on the next haircut. And it'll be better each time you go as long as we decide to keep the same haircut. So here, I'm not worried about her bangs yet. I'm just going to deal with her hairline and her angling. So I'm going to take where she's angled already at this point where it cuts in a little deeper and I'm going to blend the line. So let me come to this side so you can see on the camera what I'm doing. Now I'm left handed so on this side I'm actually going to, I'll come around this way, I'm going to slice down. That will be easier for you to see so I'm not standing over the camera. I'm going to take her shortest point and I'm just going to start blending. Now for me, being the hairstylist, I have to make the professional decision of when I start blending to meet this point, I'm opening her hair up more right here in the haircut, which means when she comes around front, what I've done is I've opened her face up a little bit more too. So this gets us back to, are we bringing her back to the oval shaped face? Are we opening her up more? And in this instance, I've made the judgment call to open her up more because she can always wrap this hair around her hair, around her face line, to be able to recreate that shape through the style, not necessarily the haircut in this instance. Come back over here. Go ahead and finish that. So here we've got a nice connected line from point A to point B. And let's go ahead and do that on the other side. So you're look all the way over here. That's good. So I'm going to try and come this way so I'm not standing in the camera. We're going to do the same sliding technique. The one thing that I love about these shears right here that I'm using is I can get a slide on wet hair or dry hair with this particular shear, which is very important to me because I never do a haircut without finishing it dry. And I like the fact that I don't have to pull four or five different shears out in this instance just to do one haircut. So as you can see right here, we've connected her line. We're gonna make sure she's even on both sides. She's almost even. I've got just like a millimeter longer on this side, which is what we were saying. She grows longer on this side. Quicker. So get that even up. Right here. I always put my chin on top of the head so I can balance her head as I'm feeling the level of her hair. And that feels pretty good. Now, she said that she's comfortable with medium layers in her hair, which is very similar to the picture she brought in, which is good, because if someone comes in with a picture that does not cater to their lifestyle at all, those are some other additional things that we're going to have to discuss. But the picture she did bring in had medium length layers, so we're going to go ahead and put that in, and it works good for her because of her natural curls. She's able to get the fullness, the bounce, and the movement with those medium and long layers, and she's versatile. She can wear it in her natural curl. Or she can put some rollers, she said, or round brush style in, and it still be able to give her the same effect. So here on our layers, what we're going to do, I'm going to take this first section right here over the ear, and I'm going to pull it back a little bit. This is called traveling distance, because if I don't, I'm now going to create a hole right in here with my layers. So I'm going to extend this back just a little bit. I'm going to hold the hair straight out and I'm going to trim her ends and I'm going to come to the round of her head and I'm going to pull this same section directly out from the round of her head. There we go. I'm going to move around the whole head in sections and do the same thing. I'm not even dropping my section. I'm continuing to hold it in my hand and bringing it up.
I'm never changing the part. I'm moving in a pie section around where my part and her cowlick is, not changing the part because what I'm doing is I'm going to hold the layers consistent to where her part is so they're even on both sides as I cut. If I start parting into this section and bringing it over, I'm going to now connect the hair which is going to cause my part to have unbalanced layers if she reparts it in the same place. very important to know what your client is willing to do and what tools and products she has at home to be able to maintain this because you can give a good haircut and a great style all day long but if your client cannot perform the same service at home they're not going to be able to successfully say that they like your haircut and I know for us as stylists the biggest thing is one good haircut on one good person means 10 more people are going to come to you one bad haircut or a good haircut that the, the client can't perform at home means word of mouth to 10 other friends. And so you want to make sure that when that client leaves your chair that they're able to be able to do this at home. A lot of times what I do that helps my clients is say, hey, if you're having any trouble, you can come back in for a sample blow dry service and I'll let you do what you do and I can coach you along the way. That always reassures them to know that if I can't do this at home, I've got the backup plan to know that I've got the help to assist me to be able to do this. And that guarantees your work a lot of times and just that extra step will bring you more clients. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm cutting right through the middle and I'm just checking my haircut. I am higher on this side than I am over here, but what that's doing is with our layers, it's creating traveling distance. So I want to make sure I'm even, which I'm actually a little bit off on the left side. So, hey, that's okay. I'm going to go back in. That's what checking your haircut's for. And I'm going to even that out. So we're going to refine her part. We're going to bring this up. I'm going to find where the disconnect is. I'm going to just cut the tip of that off. And I'm going to come back bit further and what this is doing is it's balancing your layers on the top flat it's not cutting the length off because we want medium and long layers if I were to hold this straight up and just chop all this off and connect my two points I'm going to now create a short layer I don't want to create a short layer I want to keep it medium to long if I hold this straight up and I cut this off right here I'm now creating a layer that falls here in medium and long. So I'm not looking to take length off, I'm just looking to find and tip off that unbalanced area. So now when she drops, we're going to find our layers falling in the same place on both sides. And